In this lesson, we are assuming that you already have a decent conceptual understanding of the Weighted Average Cost of Capital, or the WAC, and how it's calculated. What we're doing here is taking the Weighted Average Cost of Capital concept one step further by calculating the WAC for a company's division. A majority of large corporations do business in many different industries. These different divisions within a company are not all subject to the same economic environment. Therefore, they are subject to different levels of risk. For example, Boeing builds airplanes for commercial use and for the Department of Defense. The commercial division is obviously going to have a higher level of risk. This risk means that Boeing's commercial division has a higher beta. A higher beta means that the cost of equity is higher and since the cost of equity is higher, so is the weighted average cost of capital for the commercial division. Now, we know that the WAC is the cost of capital, and for a company to be profitable, it must only take on projects that have an expected return that is higher than the weighted average cost of capital. Let's go ahead and look into this deeper by using a made-up case. Suppose Boeing needed to make a decision on whether or not to accept a project of developing a new commercial aircraft, the 7E7. Boeing's management determined that the expected internal rate of return for this project is 17.32%. Boeing's company weighted average cost of capital is 11.13%, which is significantly lower than the internal rate of return for the 77 project. The problem here is that Boeing has a defense division that makes the company's weighted average cost of capital much lower. The 77 project is a commercial project, Therefore, Boeing needs to find out what the commercial division weighted average cost of capital is. They can then compare the internal rate of return of the 77 project with the weighted average cost of capital of the commercial division. So how do we find the weighted average cost of capital of the commercial division? The first thing we would do is find some important figures such as Boeing's capital structure, their cost of debt, their beta, and their tax rate. We would also need to find the market risk premium, which is determined by the risk-free rate and the market rate of return. We are going to give you all of these components for simplification purposes, but it is important that you know how to find these components on your own. Step 1. Calculate Boeing's unlevered beta. Unlevered beta is also known as the asset beta. The unlevered beta is the beta that the company would have if it was 100% equity financed, meaning it has no debt. When people refer to a stock's beta, they are referring to the levered beta, which is the beta that is given. The unlevered beta must be solved using this formula. The beta unlevered formula is the levered beta divided by 1 plus 1 minus the tax rate times the debt to equity ratio. And if we plug in our assumptions, we can see that we have our given beta, or the levered beta of 1.45, divided by 1 plus 1 minus our tax rate of 0.35 times a debt to equity ratio of 0.525. This gives us a beta unlevered of 1.0811. Step 2. Calculate the unlevered beta for the defense division of Boeing. Now that we know Boeing's unlevered beta, we need to find the unlevered beta of Boeing's defense division. We do this by finding companies that are similar to Boeing's defense division and solve for their unlevered betas. For this purpose, these companies are known as proxies. We then average their unlevered betas. The average unlevered betas of our proxies will be Boeing's Defense Division's unlevered beta. So now what we have to do here is find Defense Division proxies, calculate unlevered betas, and average their unlevered betas to get Boeing's Defense Division's unlevered beta. The proxies that we are going to use are Lockheed Martin and Northrop Grumman because they are defense contractors that operate in industries most closely related to Boeing. Here you can see that we use the unlevered beta formula to solve for Lockheed Martin's unlevered beta and Northrop's unlevered beta. Then we just average the two betas to find Boeing's 
Defense Unlevered Beta. Step 3. Calculate the unlevered beta for Boeing's commercial division. Now that we know an estimate of Boeing's Defense Division's unlevered beta, we are able to calculate the unlevered beta of the commercial division. We already know the unlevered beta for Boeing. The weights in which Boeing operates, 46% in defense and 54% commercial. And the unlevered beta for the defense division, which is 0.2296. So now, to solve for the beta unlevered, we take the weight that Boeing operates in commercial and multiply it by the unlevered beta of the commercial division. And then we add that to the weight that Boeing works in the defense division and multiply it by the unlevered defense division beta. Now if we rearrange this formula, we'll find a formula for the unlevered beta for the commercial division. So now we've rearranged it and we have the beta unlevered minus the weight in defense times the unlevered defense beta all over the weight that Boeing works in the commercial sector. Now we plug in our inputs and we have a commercial unlevered beta of 1.8063. Step 4. Calculate Boeing's commercial division levered beta. Now that we have the unlevered beta for Boeing's commercial division, we are able to calculate the levered beta of Boeing's commercial division. We would simply plug in the correct inputs to the formula. Step 5. Calculate the commercial cost of equity. Now that we have the levered beta for Boeing's commercial division, we can calculate the cost of equity using the capital asset pricing model. The capital asset pricing model is the cost of equity equals the risk-free rate plus beta times the risk of the market minus the risk-free rate, which is the market risk premium. Since we are calculating the cost of equity for the commercial division, we are going to use the commercial division's levered beta in the capital asset pricing model, not the company beta. So now if we plug the correct inputs into the capital asset pricing model, we find that Boeing's commercial division has a cost of equity of 21.86%. Step 6. Calculate the weighted average cost of capital for the commercial division. Now that we have the cost of equity for the commercial division of Boeing, we can calculate the weighted average cost of capital for Boeing's commercial division. In order to get the WAC, we need to know the percentage of capital that was funded with debt and the percentage of capital that was funded with equity. We know that our debt to equity ratio is 0.525. We can manipulate the debt to equity ratio to find Boeing's capital structure. We do this by making the debt to equity ratio equal x over 1. Debt equals x and equity equals 1. We know that the value of a company is debt plus equity. So the value equals x plus 1. And then we know our weight of debt would be x over x plus 1, and our weight of equity would be 1 over 1 plus x. When we do this, we find that our capital structure is 34.4% debt and 65.6% .6 equity. We know the weighted average cost of capital formula is weight of debt times cost of debt all times 1 minus the tax rate plus the weight of equity times the cost of equity for the commercial division. Now we need to plug in the inputs. Since we are calculating the weighted average cost of capital of Boeing's commercial division, we are going to use the cost of equity for the commercial division, which is 21.86%, not the company's overall cost of equity of 14.91%. So now to solve for the weighted average cost of capital for the commercial division, we simply plug in our inputs to the weighted average cost of capital formula, and we find that Boeing's commercial division has a weighted average cost of capital of 15.69%. Since 15.69% is less than their expected internal rate of return, Boeing would invest in this project.